So in this video, we're going to be digitizing this design here, Be Kind, and we're going to be doing it all in one color, and we're going to use a specialty satin stitch, and it's going to replicate like a hand embroidered look. And the first thing that we have to do is fill out our design composition sheet so that we know what we're going to do. So you can see in this video, I'm kind of filling out the top of it, giving the size, what type of stabilizer is going to be used based on the fabric. And then we move on into actually um, planning the design. When planning the design, we're taking a into account how large we want the design to be. So we're setting up the image so that it's at the size that we want it to be digitized or the final size that we will produce it. And what we look at is the method in which we're going to go about digitizing it. Like what order are we going to do things in? And for this design, it's actually going to be done kind of like it's a, a baseball cap or a large jacket back where we're going to go from the center out but also from the bottom up and this just uh, helps the fabric to um, kind of guide the fabric as it's doing the stitching so that we don't get as much puckering hopefully and this design um, I think will benefit from that so we're gonna just fill out the sheet letting giving us like a, a guide as to what type of density we're going to use what kind of stitch and any notes that we need about the design to um, make sure that we follow so that as we're digitizing we don't have to go back and make any changes so that's the point of planning is to actually you know get it all in our head as to what we're going to do so that when we execute it everything is done at that time and so the design composition sheet which is a part of the digitizing masterclass is a great tool for that it helps us to really organize our thoughts and get prepared as a pre-check, I um, like to make sure the software, all the um, preferences are set accordingly so that there are no surprises as we go to digitize the design. When digitizing the first part, um, we're doing the word kind because we're starting from the bottom up and the K is kind of in the middle. So we're doing the K first, but we're going from right to left. And the important thing with doing this style of design that we're focusing on in this lesson is not having any overlaps whatsoever. This is a specialty stitch and you don't want stitches going on top of other stitches. So you digitize it a little different than what you would if you were going to do this as a standard satin stitch. So um, you really have to pay attention to what we're doing here. and. Um, so you'll see in this design that everything kind of lines up together and we're going from right to left then we're going from the letter I um, left to right but we're just really making sure that if we're doing any pathing we're doing it ourselves we're doing it with a running stitch and it's going right down the middle because this type of stitch if we go around the edges that running stitch would show up so um, because of the type of stitch, we really have to be careful about it. And these are some of the things that we like to do in the Digitizing Masterclass series and the um, FTCU Masterclass series is, is actually um, focusing on different techniques and how we actually digitize those techniques. So you can see in this video, we're just focusing on the word kind. And then from there, we're gonna move on to the um, word B. With the word B, um, we are doing a center out style, but I'm kind of focusing on just a run stitch pathing over to the left hand side. And the reason for this is because of this type of stitch again, we're really focusing on not having an overlaps and we want it to look as natural as possible, meaning we want it, the letters to look as if um, they would if we wrote them out ourselves with a with a pen or pencil on paper. And so in order to do that, um, it was important to kind of start the, with the letter B and go to E. However, we did start the pathing from um, the third letter E. So in this one, we're just doing the same thing as what we did with the word kind. We're really focusing on not having any overlapping. Any kind of a pathing stitch is going to be done down the middle. And we're just trying to make this look as natural as possible without any excess bulk because this type of stitch being like a, a five ply bean satin stitch, 
it's going to have these really thick looking stitches. It's going to look great. For the B, we really wanted to emphasize the different parts of the B. So we have the wings, we have the body, and kind of the antennas and the, the stinger. And um, I really wanted to focus on creating kind of a border around the edge of the B just to kind of help set it off because this is going to look kind of hand done. Um, there's just some design design decisions that were made to help hopefully make this look really kind of more hand done and um, and really just kind of unique. And so really had to pay attention to the pathing on this design and which objects were done first and last. And um, I kind of explained that through the video um, if you're part of the masterclass series where you get to see and I get to show you all of the settings and everything like the densities and all the properties uh, of the stitches but the B was it took a while to do because of how you know kind of used more of these specialty stitches but also just having to really pay attention to stitch angles and the um, sequence in which objects were done so um, that was the B and how we did it and after that then we just focused on um, going through the design and making sure that everything um, was done correctly in checking the design to see if it's done correctly the things that we look for are like the lock stitches um, travel stitches um, but really a lot on lock stitches and trims just to make sure that everything has a tie in and tie off wherever it's needed so that the stitches won't unravel which is very important and then we just make sure the sequencing start points end points we just make sure that everything is going the way that we want it to um, just to ensure that when we stitch it out everything's going to be correct it's very important to take some time in the editing process to figure out if everything is um, there because in the editing process of this design we actually did find there was one place where there wasn't a tie-in that needed to have a tie-in and um, so it's just really important even even with a plan it's sometimes easy to forget to do something and so it's very important to actually take the time to analyze the design when you're done before you save it for production in this uh, stage we're just saving it I always recommend you save it in the WAF format first which is the native for this software you'd save it in whatever format your software utilizes and that's your outline file your native file and you always want to make sure you have that because that's the file you want to edit next I save it as a DST file because that's the format that my machine reads I added this section as a bonus. I created this honeycomb look and I created it at utilizing a run stitch and I just thought it really kind of added to the design. So um, it's just something I decided to do at the end because I thought it would look good and I, I was really happy with how it came out and um, so I wanted to include that in the design and I just made it custom from scratch and um, made sure it kind of followed the shape of the overall design. If you enjoy digitizing, if you like to um, create your own designs and maybe you struggle a little bit creating designs or knowing what to do, how much um, compensation to use, how much density to use, how much underlay to use, there's a lot of different things that go into digitizing. If you struggle in any area of digitizing, that's why I created the Digitizing Masterclass and the FTCU Masterclass. The Digitizing Masterclass is generic. It's for anybody who wants to learn how to digitize and it doesn't matter which type of software you have it works for all the different types of software programs the FTCU masterclass is a little different it's focused on training for both digitizing and also FTCU the Floriani Total Control U software and so those people who own FTCU software generally go with that product but if you are wanting to learn how to just digitize and get the most out of digitizing so that you can learn the rules, the theory behind it, and have success and confidence when you're digitizing designs, please check out the Digitizing Masterclass. I enjoy teaching these um, lessons, 
and I put a lot of time and effort into them. In the digitizing masterclass is not um, a small course by any means. It is full of information, videos, and not only that, but lessons that you get to you know, watch me do stuff, and then you get files that you get to apply what you've learned. So it's an actual course um, where you're going to actually do things, and that's what makes it different and unique from other software program or digitizing programs. So this is DJ Anderson. I hope that you've enjoyed watching this little series and I will see you in the next video.